Hi, I'm Kenlin, and we're... Josh, can you see anything? No, it's all black. I don't... I don't... Oh, shh. <laughs> you had the lens cap on. I got the situation under control now. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Kenlin, and Josh and I are going to do our video project on egg production. My great-great-grandfather was an egg farmer, and I had some of his old stuff, so I thought it would be interesting. We were supposed to research an industry that's experienced quite a few changes over the years, and that's true of the egg industry. Then we need to come up with our reasoning for the changes. We need to schedule some interviews and on-location shooting. We've got that all set up now. Okay, this is your part. All right. Ready? Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, we decided we would start with some background on hens and eggs, and then we're going to do a bit of history on egg production. For comparison, we'll see how things are done today, and we'll ask how things have changed. <sighs> Did that sound okay? Yeah, that was good. Who's going to edit this anyway? Well, we're going to. Because my band to. could do some really cool songs for this. Um... There are many varieties of laying hens, but the most common is the single comb white leghorn. These birds have got a lot going for them. They reach egg laying maturity early, adapt well to different climates, and are known for consistently laying a large number of white shelled eggs. These hens also have a relatively small body size, use their feet efficiently, and can produce over 250 eggs a year. With lane hens, controlled or selective breeding is used. For parents of new chicks, hatcheries pick the strongest, healthiest birds with good egg laying records, so they can pass on favorable genetic factors like disease resistance. While white eggs are the favorite for most of the U.S., brown shelled eggs are now available in most markets, and they're the preference in one area of the country. The names of the original brown egg laying hens from which modern breeds are derived give it away. Rhode Island Red, New Hampshire, Plymouth Rock. Oh, I know, New England? Right. And on commercial hens, their coloring tells you what color egg they will lay. If the bird has white feathers and earlobes, like the leghorn, it will lay white eggs. If it has dark feathers and red earlobes, it will lay brown eggs. So is there any difference between white and brown shelled eggs? Besides the color? Nope, they're the same. Cook the same and have the same high quality protein. It's just a matter of choice, I guess. So how'd you do on egg formation? Oh, check this out. I got this from Auburn University. Cool. The hen's reproductive system consists of the ovary, where the yolk develops, and the oviduct, where the egg is completed. In the ovary, are thousands of future yolks called ova. They develop one at a time, each encased in its own sac, or follicle. At ovulation, the follicle ruptures and releases the yolk into the oviduct. The yolk passes through the infundibulum into the magnum. This is where the hen will deposit a dense, shock-absorbing layer of albumin around the yolk. Then the shell membranes are formed in the isthmus. The egg is more like a blob of jello wrapped in cellophane at this point. It doesn't get its shape until it gets to the uterus. The egg spends most of its time in the uterus, where the shell is formed out of calcium carbonate. Just before laying, the egg rotates, so it will be laid large end first. This whole process takes about 24 to 26 hours. After the egg is laid, the hen will start the cycle again in about 30 minutes. One of the main reasons the egg is so popular is due to what it offers. It's a natural, nutrient-dense food with no hormones. You can eat eggs by themselves in a variety of ways, and they're a crucial ingredient in countless recipes. Eggs contain the highest quality protein of any food, and they come in their own convenient packages. Um, is this your band? Yeah, isn't it awesome? <laughs> Couldn't we use something less distracting? What? Well, fine. The shell of an egg is mostly made of calcium carbonate and makes up about 9 to 12 percent of the total weight of an egg. The shell isn't solid. There are thousands of tiny pores all over the shell surface to allow moisture and carbon dioxide out and air in. The yolk makes up about 34% of the liquid weight of an egg, and its color depends on what the hen eats. Yeah, the amount of yellow-orange plant pigments in the hen's diet will determine how yellow the egg's yolk is. Grain is the basis of the hen's diet. The type of grain varies depending on which one is most available in different parts of the country. The feed is carefully balanced to include all of the hen's needs, including calcium, vitamin D, 
and phosphorus for eggshells. The albumin is a thick, almost clear liquid that surrounds the yolk. This is commonly called the egg white, since it turns white when beaten or cooked. The albumin accounts for about two-thirds of an egg's liquid weight and contains just over half, about 57%, of an egg's protein. An egg is warm when it's laid, about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. As it cools, the liquid contents contract. The inner and outer shell membranes will separate at the large end of the egg and form an air cell. The size of the air cell is used for grating. There's a lot going on in an egg. Hard to believe that hens lay almost one a day. Almost. The average is over 250 eggs a year, but it hasn't always been this way. In the 1920s and 30s, egg farms were still mostly backyard systems. Many farmers had laying hens to supply their own families with eggs and would sell any extra eggs at local farmers markets. Where did you find this music? I found it in our library. As selling eggs became profitable, some farms started building up flocks of laying hens, around 400 birds. The hens roamed around outside with a coop for roosting. Living outside presented some problems, mainly with weather and predators. There were some social issues too within the flock. Bigger and more aggressive birds would dictate a pecking order, meaning they would eat more of the food and leave less for the other birds. At that time, the egg processing was pretty labor intensive, as it was all done by hand. The grading and inspection was done by hand too. This is candling, putting an egg up to a bright light so you can see inside. This was first done in front of a candle and the name stuck. These people are looking at the size of the air cell. Grade A eggs can have an air cell up to 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. There are different sized eggs like extra large, large, and medium. Size is now determined by the minimum weight of a dozen eggs. Decades ago, weighing was done using a scale like this. Wooden boxes were used to transport eggs to the market, by truck or even by wagon. It took a lot of work to get an egg to the consumer. And just like today, consumers wanted fresh and economical eggs. Farmers looked at ways to increase the hen's health. A healthy hen will lay a lot of good eggs. Diseases were a big problem. Using selective breeding helped in developing healthy flocks. Parasites were another problem and special medicines were developed to help combat them, like these gizzard capsules. <laughs> I'm sure those are tasty. Controlling what the birds ate was another major step forward. Over time, this became more scientific, like this laying tonic developed by a veterinarian. Well, looks like these advances helped. Although the hens were only laying about 150 eggs a year, with a mortality rate of about 40% per year, not good numbers. After World War II, things really started to change. Advances in machinery and automation replaced many of the labor-intensive egg processes. Conveyor belts moved eggs to automatic washers and sorters, and eggs were put into cartons by machines for final delivery. The advent of refrigerated warehouses and trucks maintained freshness. An egg at room temperature ages more in a day than it does in a week in the refrigerator. Speeding up the egg processing meant getting fresher eggs to the consumer faster. Another big change was the housing for the hens. Different studies were conducted on moving the hens to indoor living, and the research showed many benefits. Farmers found that building specialized large hen houses, although expensive, resulted in much healthier birds. Being indoors meant that the hens weren't exposed to predators in the elements, including temperature extremes. Indoor housing prevented parasite infestations, like leg mites, and reduced the spread of diseases from outside carriers, like rodents, and even humans. Feeding was more controllable, too. The hens couldn't eat whatever they found outside anymore, so hen health and egg productivity improved. Hen mortality went down to 18% a year, but there were still some of the same old problems. Sanitation, and waste control, pecking order, and the eggs were often dirty and exposed to some of the same waste-related bacteria as the hens. Ohio State University began experimenting with raised wire floor housing for laying hens in the late 1920s. These studies continued, and in the late 1940s, Texas A&M and other institutions became involved. Their findings showed favorable results with separated wire housing, which came to be called the cage system. These ideas quickly went from scientific research to practice on farms throughout California. 
Raising the hens off the floor greatly improved the sanitation situation. Neither the hens nor the eggs came in contact with the waste, and waste removal was much easier. Feeding became more uniform, as the timid hens were able to eat and drink as much as the more aggressive hens. Because of this, less feed was needed overall for the flock. The birds had more equal opportunity to eat the feed they were required, and the resulting eggs were more uniform in nutrient quality. And the numbers from California backed up the scientific research. The health of the flock was up, so much so that the hens were producing about 250 eggs per year, and the mortality rate dropped down to 5%. As word spread about the results from this cage system, more and more farms built new facilities with this style of housing. In the colder climates, such as in the Midwest, farmers modified the southern structures by enclosing them and adding fans for ventilation. This provided a great source of heat for the winter, the hens. Their combined body heat helped to maintain a comfortable temperature in the houses throughout the winter, and the fans provided the right temperatures in the summer. The system also lent itself to increased automation, which was needed to handle the increased output from the hens. Conveyor belts were added to the hen house to collect the eggs as soon as they were laid and carry them to the washers. Most other aspects of the egg process became automatic as well with specialized washing machines, candling stations, and weighing and grading equipment. These were much more advanced than the one egg at a time scales. Interesting. So it looks to me like a lot of the changes had to do with the new technology. All the new innovations reduced labor costs, so consumers could therefore buy eggs at a lower price. Yeah, but I think the only reasons the farmers needed to handle more eggs was because the hens were laying more eggs. I think the changes is all about the hens, how they research and improve the housing for healthier flocks. Josh managed to get us an interview with a veterinarian at Purdue University so that we could learn more about hen health. And then we're going to shoot at some egg farms and ask about these changes. That was pretty good. Hey, Josh, and when we're editing, can you not put in any of those cheesy sparkly wipes? Oh, sure, absolutely. So what can you tell us about laying hen health? Hen health is extremely important to egg producers. Scientists know what the nutrient requirements of laying hens are. This has been studied extensively over the years. We know just uh, exactly how much to feed these hens relative to uh, protein, amino acids, uh, vitamins, minerals, calcium, and phosphorus. So a hen is fed a, a complete diet and it has all the nutrients needed to promote uh, her health as well as egg production. Each housing system has its advantages and, and disadvantages, whether we're talking about range rearing, cage systems, uh, hens on floors, aviaries or whatever. And, and one of the advantages of, of the cage system is the fact that uh, the fecal material is kept away from the hens and from the egg to allow for a safer food supply for the consumer. Another advantage of cage systems uh, by the fact that you can group them in small colony sizes as a, compared to a floor system or a range system where they're exposed to the whole interactive flock. And science has shown many times that aggressiveness is lowered in a small colony size of a few birds as compared to being exposed to the whole flock. The average chicken um, can probably remember around about 50 other chickens. And um, one of the most stressful things to a chicken is meeting a chicken that it doesn't know, because then it has to you know, figure out who's boss, establish the pecking order. I mean, the phrase pecking order comes from this aspect of social behavior in chickens. If you're living in a relatively small group of individuals and the individuals that you can interact with next door, then you know all of those individuals, you know your relationship to them, and that's a stable social situation that actually is how chickens live in the wild. It's, it's, it's a situation which means that they don't have a lot of, of social stress, perhaps. Um, if you start housing them in much larger groups, then there's the possibility that there might be a lot more social stress. I think there are two really important things to understand about producers. They care about the animals that they look after. And um, they're not going to be in business for very long if they don't look after their animals well. Every system has its pluses and minuses. The cage system does really benefit the, many aspects of the health of the bird. The, the, the welfare guidelines and the welfare recommendations that are being adopted by the industry are science-based, and that's really our job. Our job as scientists is to be impartial, to 
to figure out ways of properly measuring well-being and properly assessing the changes that the industry are, are interested in or, or the well-being issues that they're concerned about and helping them find solutions. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, thank you for coming and, and good luck with your project. Are you sure you know where we're going? I know where we're going, Josh. We're not lost. I think we're lost. Stop being a side seat driver. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Right. That's cool. We're heading to an egg farm, which happens to be in Indiana, which happens to be one of the highest egg producing states in the country. Iowa is number one, and the other large egg producing states are Ohio, Pennsylvania, California, Texas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Florida, and Georgia. Today there are about 235 egg production companies in the U.S. with flocks of over 75,000 hens, and approximately 65 of those companies have over 1 million layers each. All in all, there are around 280 million laying hens in the U.S and the population is about 300 million, so that's about one laying hen per person. Somewhere out there is your own personal hen. Woo, we made it. Kellen didn't get us lost. Good job, Kellen. Thanks. Hi there. Hi. You must be Kellen and Josh. Yes, I'm Kellen and the guy behind the camera is Josh. Welcome to Creighton Brothers. What do you say we go inside and uh, do a little visiting? All right. All right. Thank you for letting us visit. Where would you like to start? Uh, could we start with the history of the farm? Sure. The farm began back in 1925 when brothers Hobart and Russell Creighton bought 1,200 chickens. And they started by having these birds outdoors on the, on the grass, we called it on the open range. And then after a period of years, they found that they moved them inside and it kept the mortality down from outside predators and uh, they were safer inside. Well, we had heard that you used the indoor flooring system up till a few years ago. How does that work? Well, we were one of the uh, last companies in the business to convert to the cage system because when we moved birds from outdoors indoors, we just put them on a floor and then we had feeders and things inside the buildings where all the birds still roamed together and they were just walking around uh, finding feed and water in that building. Very difficult to manage on an individual basis. I mean, they're just one big flock of birds and you kind of see the whole thing, but you don't have any individual management of those chickens. And then over the period of years, as cages became more and more prevalent in our industry, you get the birds in a system where the, the ventilation and the feed programs are so much better. Each bird can have uh, individual attention where the caretaker can go down an aisle and look at each bird, the feed's in front of it, the water's right there, the ventilation is all computerized, and it's just a really great way to take care of chickens. And uh, it's really, really the best thing I could do is take you out and let you see a, bar a barn that, where all these chickens are. So I'll introduce you to Cal Jackson, our technical services man, and he can take you out to the farm and show you exactly what we're talking about. That would be great. Here's Cal now, Will. Hey Josh, can I shoot? Fine. Okay. Josh, Cal Jackson. Hi, Josh. He's our technical services guy. This is Kenlin. Hi. And Howdy. he's going to take you guys out to the farm and show you a chicken house. Cool. Are you guys ready to go? I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go. Go right ahead. Wow, Cal, this place is huge. Well, it's uh, four buildings are here, and we have uh, just under 900,000 birds total at this farm site. And the building we'll be going to will have just around 223,000 birds total. Wow. Hey, uh, can I strap my camera to a chicken's head? Uh, n no, Josh. <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, I thought it would be a cool shot. So uh, let's uh, get you guys in some coveralls and we'll go take a look cool. at the birds. I wouldn't want to get my shirt dirty. i got to keep this one clean. Well, Josh, actually, it's not for your shirt. It's uh, more we're concerned about what you might bring into the birds. Oh, I see. Biosecurity. Biosecurity, that's right. Well, let's, let's get you dressed up. There you go. Biosecurity really is a big deal throughout the industry, and it is one of the benefits of the cage system. Now, by keeping out other animals, we can prevent poultry diseases, and keeping tight control on who enters the layer houses helps to ensure the quality and safety of the eggs. Okay, well now that you're properly dressed, let's go see some chickens. Cal told us how these buildings are designed so that all of the environmental variables are controlled by computers. With this type of system, 
The temperature and humidity are kept at a comfortable level year-round. The computers control the ventilation fans to provide fresh air and control the lighting, too. The hens lay their eggs between 7 and 11 a.m. Cal said the hens won't lay eggs when it's dark. The hens are raised off the floor to allow waste to fall clear of the hens and the eggs. This eliminates the threat of any waste or soil-borne contamination and diseases and provides good airflow. Computers also control the feeding. These feeders run on rails and distribute fresh feed equally among the flock. At the farm, they make their own feed based on scientific research. It's a mixture of things, including corn or another grain, vitamins, and minerals. The hens all have unrestricted access to fresh water, too. Cal told us that, with the cage system, hen health has increased dramatically compared to the floor system. The cage system also makes it easier to inspect each hen every day and to weigh the birds every week. Instead of waiting to gather eggs a few times a day, this setup has freshly laid eggs going straight to a conveyor belt that carries the eggs past a counter and right into processing. There are about 260,000 hens in this house, and each hen lays about 250 eggs per year. Based on what we've learned so far, these hens must be pretty healthy. This is our uh, shell egg processing facility, and this is where all the eggs come to from the farms. How many eggs do you process a day? We process about 1.8 million eggs a, a day here. Wow. It's about three times what we used to do 30 years ago. Well, let's go take a look. Okay. Coming, Josh. All right. Cal walked us down the line and showed us all the various stages of the process. This machine actually does two things. It rotates the eggs so that they're all in the same position throughout processing, and it washes them. They use a specialized solution of water and soap to clean and sanitize the eggs. The water temperature is about 106 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a dirt detection system. It used to be someone's job to look at all these eggs going past and pick out the ones that had spots of dirt on them. Now the eggs cruise right past an array of 16 different cameras. The eggs are rotated as they pass through, so the cameras can see all of the egg. The shots from the cameras are analyzed by this computer. If it sees a spot, that egg is automatically routed off to the side and back to the washer. Josh, music? We both need a good grade on this. Oh, <sighs> fine. Speaking of sound, I thought this was interesting. It's a crack detector, and it checks the egg sonically. Tiny probes tap each egg and listen for the sound it makes. If the sound has a high pitch and sustained ring, the egg is fully intact. If it's more of a thud, there's a crack somewhere and that egg will be routed to a different line. The cool thing is how fast all this happens. The eggs don't even slow down because the machine taps and listens to each egg 16 times in a matter of seconds. Some places still candle the eggs, but this is how they do it now much faster and more efficient than the old way. And this is the modern version of the one egg at a time scale. The eggs pass over sensors built into the line, all controlled by a computer. Each egg is weighed over 60 times in under a second. There is only a three ounce difference in weight per dozen between different sizes of eggs, like medium, large, and extra large. The eggs then go through this grading machine. These machines are huge and can handle millions of eggs a day. Once the eggs have gone through all of the inspections and grading, they're sorted to separate lines for packaging. The eggs are sorted by grade and size. This is the line for grade A, large eggs. There are other lines for grades AA and B, medium and large sizes too. Big farms like this one fill orders for several different grocery outlets, so they'll run different cartons depending on their orders. Some stores specify fiber cartons, while others might use foam. Advanced technology is used in the packing. The date information is burned into the cartons with a laser. The date might be an expiration or sell-by date, which is used by the stores, or a best-by or use-by date, which is meant for the consumer. Basically, the carton of eggs you bring home from the store will last at least three weeks in your refrigerator with no real quality loss. And if you've got lasers, you got to have robots. These arms are controlled by a computer that gets information from different sensors. So the arms know when to pick up the cartons on each line, how to turn them, and when the box is full. Then a new box is unfolded and the robotic arms keep on packing. 
The packed boxes are placed on pallets and sent to the refrigerated warehouse, where they'll be loaded into refrigerated trucks. This all happens pretty quickly. Even with all these processing steps, eggs are often shipped out the same day they are laid. They told us that this person was not just randomly stealing eggs. To make sure all this high-tech machinery is doing a good job, they pull cartons off the line and check them for quality. The quality assurance employees check the eggs for cracks and dirt. Then they measure the eggs for size and confirm their grade to make sure they meet the standards. As long as everything checks out, this farm just keeps moving eggs. A place like this will ship millions of eggs every day. And that's just at one farm. In total, the U.S. produces about 75 billion eggs a year. Almost 60% are used by consumers. About 9% are used by the food service industry. The rest are turned into egg products, which are used mostly by food service operators to make meals we eat in restaurants, and by food manufacturers to make foods like mayo and cake mixes. To offer consumers a choice, generic eggs and specialty eggs are available too, including nutrient-enhanced, pasteurized, organic, and vegetarian eggs. A small percentage of producers also sell eggs from hens raised cage-free or free-range. Even though 75 billion eggs a year is a huge number, the U.S. only produces about 10% of the world's eggs. China is the biggest producer, about 390 billion eggs per year, about half of the world's supply. Eggs are in demand all over the globe because they're a naturally nutrient-dense food with no hormones. Eggs also have the highest quality protein of any food, are both affordable and easy to cook, and can be used in many different ways. Hey, I just changed my mind. The reason for the changes in the egg industry? You and me. What? <laughs> no, as consumers. You see, consumers eat a lot of eggs, but they want to keep their prices low. So the more research that goes into the hens, the more the farmers are able to keep the chickens healthy. And they have to advance their machinery with new technology to handle all the eggs. Okay, I like that. So how should we end this? I don't know, but all this research about eggs is making me hungry. Some scrambled eggs would be really good right now. I think I could go for a hard-boiled egg. No, 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 how about some deviled eggs? Maybe an omelet? Oh, no, fried or poached eggs. Hey, that's how we could end this thing. What do you mean? Showing all the different ways you can eat an egg. Ah, can we squeeze in some shots of my band? Absolutely not. This program was brought to you by the American Egg Board.